It was a goal of Palooza here at PNC Arena. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Canes Corner Podcast. Appreciate you hanging out as we kind of gloat and flex our muscles after a 7-2 to two Hurricanes win over the Calgary Flames, frankly. Um, 2 nothing after one flattered the Flames. Because Carolina could have scored five. Now, it wasn't like there were tons of scoring chances that they blew. Like, it wasn't like they they could have gotten three, maybe four. But for the amount of time they had the puck in front of Dan Vladar, there were just, they should have created more scoring chances. And part of that is that there's still a little bit of unfamiliarity between Yevgeny Kuznetsov and Martin Natchez. And that combination has the potential to be really, really dangerous uh, as they get more familiar with each other. And I think Rod is probably thinking, yep, those two guys belong together. And then who do we put on the other side? Who do we put on the left between uh, Kuznetsov and Natchez? Heck, even though I've always thought that Jake Gensel would play with Sebastian Ajo, you can make an argument for Gensel with Kuznetsov and Natchez, and then just, I mean, hope that the goals flow. Because at some point, especially on home ice, that line is going to get third pairs. Third pairs and third uh, and third lines. You know, if you're playing, whoever you're playing against, the Rangers or the Islanders in the first round of the playoffs, not the first round of the playoffs, but uh, Islanders or Red Wings, maybe the Lightning, uh, depending on who finishes uh, in the number one wild card spot, I guess theoretically could be Philly, uh, but I think Philly might just kind of fall away here. Um, I mean, that line could be absolutely devastating. Anyway, we're brought to you by the Aluminum Company of North Carolina. If it's for the exterior of your home, you can find it at the Aluminum Company of North Carolina on Hamlin Road in Durham. Uh, appreciate uh, you if you have any home improvement needs for the exterior of that home, you would check them out. Aluminumcompany.com. Let's see. Let's uh, see how many friends we can shout out. Don't know if anybody is awake in Australia. Shouts to you. Uh, Shouts to you in Dublin. Shouts to you in Virginia Beach. Uh, Alaska, Hawaii, wherever you are. Uh, And you are listening to this live on YouTube or watching it. I guess you can listen to it. Every once in a while, I will put things on YouTube and just listen. So I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday evening or Monday, whatever, wherever you are. Uh, So uh, thank you very much. Yes. Good morning to our friend in Adelaide, uh, (laughs) which I don't know what time it is. It's I think Adelaide is like might be 14, 15. I don't know. I don't know. We hopefully everybody was uh, was on time for things today. We kicked the clocks ahead an hour. That's right here in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. We kicked the cro- the clocks ahead. Uh, so uh, thank you very much to all of you for hanging out. Uh, and I know this was kind of a laugh for it was kind of a scrimmage. My son was in the building tonight, and uh, I actually went down briefly to say hi. Uh, it's tough um, to get away from the booth when the game starts, but. The, uh, the Hurricanes really made this kind of a scrimmage today. Calgary played yesterday in Florida, and their game started about three and a half hours after Carolina. And Carolina was on the road, too, so everybody had to get on a plane. Um, so no huge advantage, uh, but the huge advantage Carolina has is that they're better than Calgary. The Flames have become basically a two-line team, if that. And the Hurricanes just took the starch out of them right away. Could have been more than two, uh, but the score line got really to where it belonged after 75 seconds of the second period. Uh, Jalen Chatfield scores 17 seconds in uh, after Carolina kills off the, the last four seconds of a power play. Uh, Jordan Stahl comes out of the penalty box and goes to the front of the net, and Jalen Chatfield rips one home, and that's that, that made it 3 nothing. 58 seconds later, Aho and Svechnikov came on in transition, and Andre passed it across to 
Andre for a one timer for nothing. And you could have turned uh, your sets, your radios, your internets off right there uh, because it was pretty much done. We'll go through the goals um, uh, in a second. And I mean, Carolina did give up the next goal. And it was a pretty goal by Calgary. Unfortunately, I mean, Freddie had no chance, no chance with it. And, and then Carolina got the next two. Uh, Brent Burns, I don't know how, five, seven, eight minutes later, Brent Burns made it 5-1. Same type of play with uh, Jalen Chatfield scoring. This one not in transition. It was This was right off a of faceoff. Kokaniemi wins the draw clean. Back to Slavin. Slavin over to Burns. And a bomb. And it's 5-1. And then uh, Carolina at the very end of the period coming in three on two and the pass to the middle of the ice Chatfield's pass to Jarvis uh, and a wrist shot from the top of the circles. I mean, it shouldn't have been easy, but it it looked easy at that point. And the hurricanes uh, had the six, one lead going to the third. Freddie Anderson had the gaff, uh, as I say, a howler goal uh, as Yevgeny Kuznetsov was, uh, trying to make a pass to the down up the slot from behind the net. Carolina was in the offensive end, uh, and the pass went all the way back into the Hurricanes' end. Anderson was trying to play it, and he just whiffed on the pass. It goes right to Yeager Sharangovich, uh, the former New Jersey Devil. That made it 6 2. Carolina would score the next goal, Tavo Teravon. And actually, maybe my favorite goal of the game, um, if it, you know, other than the first two. But it was uh, a pass, I think, from Jesperi Kokaniemi off the leg of Taravainen, popped up, and he just kind of, you know, with the blade of his stick, kind of just flicked it over the shoulder of Vladar, and that was the extra point to make it 7-2. to two. Um, So far, the lighting is much better than it was yesterday. On my uh, on my back porch. I apologize for all that for all of you people watching on YouTube who couldn't see me. But why would you want to? Exactly. All you really need to do is hear me anyway. Uh, all right. So we went through the goals, sort of. I want to give you my three stars for today, and I'm going to make a correction uh, on one just to spread it around. Uh, it's almost like the given in a geometric theorem that Jacob Slavin is one of the three stars. There are very few Hurricanes games in which he isn't one of the best three players. We just have to accept that as a matter of fact. Um, but so I made him the third star today because there was there were so many good players uh, and I didn't want to exclude defense and I thought defense was very good again tonight. Um, but we'll give it to Jalen Chatfield for a goal and an assist. He had the, obviously his goal to make it three, nothing. And then the assist on the Seth Jarvis goal played uh, about 17 and a half minutes tonight. And he was a plus four. Certainly good for the stats. Uh, all of Carolina's seven goals were at five on five tonight. So that's uh, that again, positive for the plus minus. Um, but there were a number of players who played well. I thought Brent Burns was really good. Shea and Pesci were good. Um, but Chatfield, couple of points, plus a plus four. We'll make him the third star. Second star to me was Tavo Teravainen, who was outstanding. And you can <laughs> smell turbo time. For all of Tavo Teravainen's nonchalance and lack of real interest in, oh, we'll just call it physical fitness. These are the this is the time of the year where Tavo Teravainen is going to be the best he can be. This is what he wants to do. He doesn't want to practice. He doesn't want to work out. He just wants to play, and he wants to play in these types of games. And the closer we get to the end, the closer we get to the playoffs, the more likely we are to see playoff Teravainen. And he was great today, and he's been really good for a long time. And I'm glad we're seeing him play with Aho and Svechnikov. He's my second star. And if you watch the first period, maybe the first period and a half, there was no better player in this building than Sebastian Aho. And Aho has been, uh, I would say, he goes through like valleys, it peaks and valleys. And when the offense is rolling, then, I mean, he is just a devastating player. And there are times where the offense isn't, 
and he's still pretty good. Okay, There's, that's the thing about Aho. He's still pretty good because he is a 200-foot player. He cares about the defensive side of the puck. He cares about winning faceoffs. And we'll get to that uh, faceoff stat in a minute. But when his offense is going, oh boy, and he was just dominant today. I mean, they were all over. That line was all over Calgary at the beginning. And it wasn't like they had a bad line. I mean, they were playing against, who was it? Kadri, Huberto, and Sharon Govich. That was a matchup that Rod said, yeah, let's go. Let's get, let's go best on best. So good for, uh, I mean, Ajo was great. And when Ajo is that good, uh, just makes Carolina that much more devastating. Uh, so he got my first star. Um, I don't know that Andre was bad. I'm not saying Andre was bad, but I found it a little curious that Andre got the first star of the game. Just between you and me, especially because that penalty was so stupid to take. At a, what was it, 6-2 six, six, at the time when he took it? Because it was, to me, it was kind of uh, lazy. You, know, you could have defended. And he just kind of, I'm not going to say he stuck his leg out, but he kind of stuck his leg out. I uh, was very, very uh, Kyle Filipowski about it. I'm not going to say anything about that anymore. Uh, all right. So I didn't like Andre as the first star of the game uh, to me. Uh, the the two guys between um, uh, the two guys between um, Ajo and Teravina were the two best players on that line. Uh, all right. So we'll uh, we'll move on from uh, from that. Let me give you a, a face off stat uh, real quick. So Carolina's four main guys down the middle. Now we have Kuznetsov in the mix, but the main four guys down the middle, Stahl, Ajo, um, Drury, and Kokaniemi. This is one of the things that I'm, I'm really sure that Rod Brindamore is pretty proud of. All four of Carolina's main face-off guys are over 50% in the circle. Stahl leads the way, 58.5. Before today, he was, I think, 9 nine of 20 today in the face-off circle. But Stahl leads the way at 58.5. Drury is second at 54.6, which makes the injury to Jack Drury maybe a little bit more of an issue for Carolina because he is so good in the face-off circle. Sebastian Ahu has gotten better and better at 53.4%, and today was 9 out of 12. Uh, and yes, Perry Code Kaniemi, who had a forgetful day uh, on the dot, but uh, came into today 51.1%. I think it was uh, five out of 16. Um, Kuznetsov, who is going to center probably Carolina's second scoring line, uh, was uh, it was over 500 today, like maybe 11 out of 20, 11 out of 19, something like that. Uh, but he was over 500 today. He was, I think, five and four in uh, New Jersey. So for somebody who traditionally has not been good in the faceoff circle, so we should have low expectations for that. He has had two over 500 games in the circle for Carolina. So that's good. That's encouraging. Now, it would be great if Drury wasn't going to be out for, as the head coach told me this morning, a while or this afternoon, a while, but he is going to be out a while. Um, but this is the opportunity for yes, Barry Kotkaniemi to seize the position. Because if we're, we have to be honest about these things right now, if everybody were healthy and if Jake Gensel was ready to draw into the lineup, my guess is they, he might be ready Tuesday, maybe Tuesday. More likely, I think it's Friday. But if Gensel draws in, well, we know Brendan Lemieux comes out, but who comes out after that? And, I mean, I personally, I think the answer is easy if everybody were healthy and it would be Code Kinyemi. And that's pretty hard to take for somebody who's got six more years on a con left on a contract that pays him uh, four point eight million dollars. That's not that's not easy to healthy extra up in the press box because Jack Drury has won the job. Even though Drury, by the way, 
has no goals in his last 20 games. He's got several chalked off, but he has no goals in his last 20 games. So it is a, uh, to me, Drury is the guy that would probably get Carolina's third scoring line, whoever's on it. And I'm still waiting for um, the head coach to put Jesper Foss back with Stahl and Martinuk and really just utilize them as a checking line. Uh, and I'm not sure it won't get back to that. The issue with that is that Seth Jarvis is a good fit and that line's going to play 15 minutes a night regardless. But if you have a, a, a third scoring line of Drury, Jarvis, and Nason, I mean, that line should score. <laughs> and, and, may, and maybe a lot when you get into the playoffs. Maybe a lot. So, but ultimately, if, uh, if he keeps it as it is, it's um, Faust, Drury, and Nason, and that line should still put some points on the board. Um, but I think it'll be interesting to see what happens when Gensel comes back because of the, the, just the number of combinations you could have. And I've, I've gone through this before. I don't know if you'd want, do you want, does Svechnikov and Aho have to be together or do Aho and Tara Vinen have to be together? Or is it Aho and Gensel that have to be together and it doesn't matter? I do think that Kuznetsov and Natchez, as I said um, in the second intermission, shout to you, Carolyn, um, that Kuznetsov and Natchez look like they were made to play with one another. But is as I asked uh, Ryan Henkel from Hockey News, is that too much sugar? I mean, is that like, uh, I don't know, sweet tarts on top of ice cream? It's just, wow, the, the, there, there might be too much flash in that for Rod, but I think those two guys, if they play together enough, will actually mesh and understand where each other are going. I think we're already seeing that a lot, even in a, what, not even two games because they only played together a little bit in New Jersey. Um, because Jack Jury didn't come out of the lineup. I mean, he was missing here and there. Uh, so Kuznetsov did jump in between uh, Natchez and Nason there. But, uh, man, there's a lot of possibilities uh, with those two guys. You put those two guys with maybe a little bit more of a direct player. If Andrei Svechnikov is going to play direct and you play Gensel with uh, Aho and Teravainen, or maybe you put Jake Gensel on the left side of uh, Kuznetsov and Natchez because uh, Gensel is one of the smartest players, you know, in the entire league right now. So uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of firepower. This is as good an offensive lineup as Carolina has put on the ice. Oh man. Since 2006. I mean, if you go back and you think about the 2006 team that had, and you got to almost eat, it's unfortunate you take Eric Cole off the, uh, you know, out of the mix because, uh, Cole was hurt by the time we got to the playoffs and Mark Recchi came in, but I mean, Stahl and um, Corey Stillman and Recchi and Brenda Moore and Williams and Whitney and Cullen. I mean, there were so many guys who could put the puck in the net. This was, it was a team that was just loaded. And this team, I'm not trying to compare the two teams, but it's the first time since we had a, a lineup that looked like that, that we go into a game thinking, man, we should probably score a bunch. Uh, Calgary made it look easier today. Um, all right, a couple of things I want to get to, and I'll try to uh, uh, go through some of the uh, the comments here. And I appreciate all of you guys. Uh, it's obviously a very busy day. Maybe it's because it's early uh, that uh, a lot of you are still here. Um, some guys that need to get going. Now, it's good to see Seth Jarvis score today. It's good to see Brent Burns score today because I'm going to just throw two numbers at you. Uh, Brent Burns, until today, had gone eight games without a goal. And he had one in his last 24. 
And we don't have to judge Brent Burns. We don't. We shouldn't judge any defenseman on the goals he scores, right? I mean, you are a defenseman. Your primary job, I don't care who you are, your primary job is to not allow goals. But certain defensemen, your job is also to contribute to the offense. And while Burns has been good, he has not been the Brent Burns we saw last year offensively. And the interesting thing for me is that going into the season, usually it takes a while, right? Like if you go back and you look at what Dougie Hamilton did in year one versus year two, in year two, until the, the until he got injured in the game, I think it was at Columbus. I mean, he was having a ma- a mammoth offensive season. It was like, I don't know, 0.8 points a game, something like that. It was crazy. He was having such a great year. Then he got hurt. We didn't see him anymore. Uh, I guess we did see him in the playoffs, but uh, he wasn't the same. I thought in year two, I thought Brent Burns would even be better offensively than he was a year ago. But he hasn't been. But if Brent Burns gets his offense going in the last, now, 18 games of the season, and he carries that into the postseason, I mean, guys generally end up in the same reasonable area in terms of their production, especially when you've been in the league as long as you've been. And and Burns has shown no, I mean, there's no dip in his overall play. It's just the numbers haven't been there. So you just got to think that water's going to find its level and maybe it doesn't get all the way back. But I'll be surprised if we don't see a little bit of an offensive push in terms of production from Brent Burns. Seth Jarvis, who for a long time was looking like, uh, I mean, he was basically about a point a game for about two months, has dropped off as well a little bit. It was good to see him get a goal tonight. Uh, Today, coming in, he had one goal in his last nine games. So obviously two in his last 10. Uh, But it was good to see Jarvis, who had two points tonight and was a plus two. Uh, And I know he loves playing on a line with Stahl and Martinook because I think Jarvis likes to play that way. He likes to play kind of in your face behind the goal. Um, I don't. I wonder if we're going to see maybe Seth get opportunities with other offensive players or if Rod has just decided, you know what? I kind of dig that line because it does have an element of offense to it. And when you have Jesper Foss there, uh, as my friend Corey Lavalette says, he has feet for hands. <laughs> I mean, it's hard. Uh, It's hard to generate goals from that line, even though they have the puck a lot. Uh, And you've got really three guys that don't have massive amounts of, you know, offensive acumen. I should say skill because I think they're smart, super smart players, but they don't have a lot of offensive skill. Uh, But at the same time, if they have the puck, the chances that Seth Jarvis will get more chances certainly are real. By the way, great goal between Aho and Martinook today. Uh, when Martinook carries the puck in, they sw- they kind of change, uh, you know, uh, channels, and uh, Martinook gives the puck to Aho, who kind of uh, sweeps a pass back around to Martinook uh, for the goal, just a dynamite goal that made it one nothing. Um, so it's kind of neat to see Jarvis start going. Uh, And then, I mean, we don't know about, you know, Jake Entel and Yevgeny Kuznetsov, they're here to score. But I still think that we haven't yet really seen the reemergence of Svechnikov. Now he got, you know, once he he went away, you know, it took him a while when he, at the beginning of the season, he came back. He wasn't quite the same. And then he got the upper body injury and he went away for a little bit. When he came back from that, that's when he and Aho were just, I mean, goal machines. Aho was averaging a two points a game for about three weeks. And Svechnikov wasn't far behind. And then Svech got another injury. And he hasn't quite been the same guy since. Um, I think we're getting closer to seeing it. I think we were closer to seeing it today. But he hasn't quite been the, uh, the same guy. So they need to get him going too offensively. 
and I understand he has goals in three straight. Two of those were empty net goals, and you know, they count. You get to add them to your goal total, but we all know, right? We all know that uh, we need to get some guys going. All right, let me look at the schedule, and then we're kind of kind of see if uh, we can go through some uh, some comments here. And there's a lot of people here uh, who want to uh, want to comment on this. Um, yeah, Chris says we scored seven goals tonight, and Gensel isn't even playing yet, and Kuznetsov and Natchez didn't have a point. Seriously. Did not have a point today. Um, I want to raise one concern real quick, and it was just brought up, and I just saw the uh, the line uh, for power play, uh, Agent Shadow. It's very mysterious. Uh, I think it would be cool to put to see uh, Svechnikov, Aho, Gensel, Natchez, and Burns. Yeah, Slave is not going to be on the power play. Uh, and Burns, um, that would give Carolina two righties, Natchez and Burns, and three lefties, Ajo, Svechnikov, and Gensel. Um, I mean, I I think you could, I don't know what kind of combinations he's going to use. Uh, I will say this, though. Martin Natchez probably stays on the second unit simply because he is the entry on the second unit. He's the entry. So I think you'll see Natchez stay with that unit uh, but they have so many options uh, right now. If they put J- uh, Gensel on the top power play unit, uh, and I know they're using Kuznetsov on that one now, um, you know you still have Jarvis, you'll have Svechnikov, Aho, and Burns. They have a lot of options. It, we're a long way from the Morgan Geeky on the second power play unit time. And remember, Steph Nason is an important part of the second power play unit because of what he does. Uh, around the net. Um, look, the Hurricanes are in, uh, they're in very good shape. They're in very good shape with their roster as long as they stay relatively healthy. The Jack Jury injury is a little bit of a monkey wrench because it hurts them defensively because he is so good, but it creates the opportunity for Kokaniemi to play, maybe punch above his weight a little bit and put himself back into the mix. You know, he has an opportunity to earn the ice time right now because I do feel like when uh, Drury is healthy and Gensel draws back in, I still feel like that's going to be Drury's spot, that last center spot. So if you're uh, if you're Jesperi Kokanem and you want to play, now's your time. You probably have, let's just say on the outside, because I don't know what the when Rod Brindamore says Jack Drury is going to be out. For a while. We don't know what that means. So. Is it a week? Is it two weeks? Don't I no idea. But if it's a week. If it's two weeks. Well then that's how many games. Yes Perry has. To prove his worth. And oh and and command the spot. Because if he's playing well. I don't think Rod will pull him out. If he's playing well. But he's got to be playing well. Uh, All right, let me look at the schedule here, shall we? First of all, the Rangers are playing uh, tomorrow at home against the Devils. And personally, I think the Rangers are going to win that game. Um, New Jersey has too many holes defensively. We still don't know about their goaltending. And uh, even though the Rangers, I don't think the Rangers are great. uh, I think the Rangers are better than the Devils. And I think the Rangers will win that game. So my guess is New York comes in here four points ahead of Carolina. But here's the week for the Hurricanes. Home against the Rangers, home against Florida on Thursday. By the way, if it's Thursday in March, we'll be here at PNC Arena. The Hurricanes are home every Thursday this month, Um, starting with last Thursday against Montreal. Uh, So Tuesday, uh, Tuesday, Rangers, Thursday, Florida, heck of a week on home ice. Uh, Saturday and Sunday in Toronto and in Ottawa. Last time the Hurricanes were in Toronto, uh, Carolina won that game. Kachetkov played great. So that's the week. It's not a, it's not an easy week, right? Uh, Rangers in Florida here, Toronto and Ottawa there. Uh, then Carolina comes home. I'm sorry, they go to the island on Tuesday to play the Islanders. Uh, that will wrap up the season series with New York. Carolina's had some tough outcomes really I think more than anything born out of poor goaltending against the Islanders I think they've been better than the Islanders 
uh, pretty much in, I think, all three games they've played. But I think Carolina's only got one win to go look at it. But, um, you know, I think certainly on here at PNC Arena, where Carolina lost both games, one in overtime and one uh, they just couldn't drag to overtime, it was really bad goaltending that got them both times. And I think they lost both games 5-4. Anyway, uh, that game against the Islanders might loom large for this reason. Because if you can't catch the Rangers, there's a very good chance, I think better than 50-50, that the Islanders are going to be the third place team. So you might want to start getting a little bit of a mental edge on them now. Seriously, I think the Islanders are going to catch, maybe catch and blow past the Philadelphia Flyers. The Islanders are playing that well. They were, they were up 2 nothing early on Anaheim, and it uh, looks like they're going to win their sixth in a row. Uh, after that, they come back here on Thursday to play Philadelphia. This is a, we're, we're into the next week already. Uh, they play Thursday and Friday. The Friday game is in Washington, which will be emotional for the return of Kuznetsov, I'm sure. Uh, and then they come back here on Sunday to play Toronto, and that will wrap up the season series with the Maple Leafs. And I'll just end it with the with the first game of the following week, which is on a Tuesday at Pittsburgh, which will be Jake Gensel's return to take on the Penguins. So there's going to be some emotion over the next, did I do 10 games? Nine games. Some emotion over the next nine games. Carolina's got a busy month of March. Basically, every week except the very last one has four games. And the Canes just played the third game of a six in nine days stretch. Take a breath. So we're going to be here a while. 18 games to go. And uh, the last thing we'll talk about here, and I will spend literally 30 seconds, maybe, maybe, maybe 80 seconds. Goalies, Frederick Anderson, other than the misplay on the puck, was very good today. And Walt Ruff asked me if I thought we would see Anderson today, and I did. Because there was a reason why Anderson didn't travel with the team up to New Jersey. There's no need to bring him up there. You have three goalies on the roster. Let Spencer Martin back up. Martin backed up today. I think we'll see Kachetkov on... Tuesday against the actually I don't know if we'll see Kachekov Tuesday against the Rangers. But what I think is if Rod I think we'll get an idea of who Rod wants. If Rod wants Freddie to be the one when the playoffs start, if he wants it, then I think Freddie will start against the Rangers. If Rod is still in, we're going to see. Then Kachetkov will start against New York. And unless he absolutely stands on his head and shuts out the Rangers, we'll see the other. We'll see Freddie against Florida. I think you'll see the I think you'll see a split in these two games upcoming. And right now, Spencer Martin is probably going to be just the third goalie. And that's good. They have a third goalie that they trust. And that's the way I think it it's going to be, and that's the way I think it should be. So uh, there was a lot, even though this game was a glorified scrimmage. Uh, I am Adam Gold. This has been the Canes Corner Podcast. It is brought to you by the Aluminum Company of North Carolina. If it's for the exterior of your home, you can find it at the Aluminum Company of North Carolina on Hamlin Road in Durham. No place like it. Sammy Hannon and his crew do a great job. And you should check them out online at AluminumCompany.com for all your exterior home improvement needs. So until, man. Rangers in Florida this week. It's going to be fun. I'll see everybody on Tuesday night after the Hurricanes take on the Rangers. Ciao.